Hail and Meshes. Welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spark King. And in today's video, I will show you super cool build for Minsk. Yeah, you can make this boy with his adorable book companion as basic ranger. But I want to make a really fun build today, so you can enjoy this craziness of this big boy. Instead, I want to build him as barbarian, and not just ordinary barbarian. But let's first of all create and distribute our stats. We're starting as barbarian and making stat distribution like this. 17 strength, 14 dexterity, 16 constitution and 10 into wisdom. On level 2 we continue as barbarian and on level 3 we get a choice of subclass. It will be berserker subclass, which unlocks frenzy, improved rage, with additional frenzy actions. Frenzied strike, so you can use your attack as bonus action now, and enrage throw, bonus action throw that you can make enemies prone. Very powerful stuff. And that's already on level 3, but on level 4 we begin our feat. It will be tavern brawler feat and we add in plus 1 into strength. Tavern brawler will add your strength modifier to your throne attack rolls. And that's what we are building today for. In early game you can get this returning pike really easily from trader and this weapon will always return to your hands. So already from level 4 you can make 2 throws in one turn. And when you're throwing this stuff, it's doing nice damage and returning to you instantly. Damage is also very nice, as well as hit champs. But later we will be a lot more powerful. So let's level up. Level 5 again we begin Barbarian to get extra attack. And this counts as a throw too. So you can do two throws with your action and one throw with your bonus action with three attacks at level 5 already. That's insane, but at level 6, instead of continuing as Barbarian, you want to switch your class to Rogue. Get one level into Rogue, second level into Rogue to unlock Dash, Height and Disengage as bonus section. Sometimes it will be useful, but most importantly, we're going to level 8 and get in one more Rogue level to pick our Thief subclass, which unlock additional bonus section. Now we can make 4 throws in a turn with 2 bonus actions and 2 throws with 1 action. At level 8. There's no other characters that can do it, even at level 12. So we are super powerful. And now on level 9, you're switching back to Barbarian. Getting one more level for more rage charges and mindless rage, so you get protection from being charmed or frightened. That's very nice because we basically dumped intelligence, wisdom and charisma. On level 7 as Barbarian or on level 10 of our character, we will get protection from being surprised and we get bonus to initiative, so we act first. And on level 11 we get an additional feat. It will be basic ability improvement to strength. And we're finishing with first level in a row to get additional feat. And I recommend picking tough feet to get more health points as Barbarian. So, character is done. As for early gear, I already told you it will be returning Pike. But let me show you end game gear what you want to take on your road. So in the mid game it will be graceful close. You will gain plus 2 to dexterity, bonus jump distance and basically nice claws for Barbarian. It will increase your armor class, so our armor class in mid game is not too low. And then we're going closer to the late game. So, marksmanship hit. You gain in plus one bonus to range attack rolls and thrown attack rolls. Very important to have high hit chance in the mid game. Disintegrating night walkers. You will have misty step ability once per short rest. And it's very important, I will show you how to use it in a second. And one ring that makes all this possible is ring of flinging, which will add 1 d4 to your throw damage. So again, you're doing at least 4 throws in a turn and that's pretty nice damage boost. In the early game you can find a nice hand gear that will add additional damage to these throws. You can find it by completing quests in Underdark. But in the end game I recommend switching to Dark Displacement Gloves for this build especially. It will be very fun and very useful and very creative if you find how to use them. So you're gaining bonus to attack rolls when throwing and may swap position with target if they fail dexterity saving throw. For our end game gear it will be Bone Spike Garb. You gain temporary hit points when you rage and reduce incoming damage. In the super late game you can swap uh, this marksmanship hat to Mask of Soul Perception to gain plus 2 to attack rolls, 
but it's a matter of like style and your choice, do you want to use it or not. And of course, our weapon, Nerilna. You can get it in Act 3, it's a throwable weapon, it will get back to your hand and it will do a large thunder damage when you're throwing it at your target. You're gaining more movement speed, jumping distance, immunity to falling damage, very nice enchantment, nice skills for this weapon, so that's really powerful stuff. And in third act you can get the sentinel shield. So plus three bonus to initiative rolls, you will always act first. Considering we don't have really high armor class, it doesn't matter too much when we got a large amount of health points, but still, if it's possible, I recommend getting this amulet of greater health for this character to increase constitution, which will increase our armor class up to 20. And now we will get 177 hit points. Additionally, we can respect our character at this point when we get this amulet, get more dexterity, and we finish this game with 21, 20 AC. So how to play? this crazy barbarian let's go so as you can see our options it's pretty limited and we don't even need a lot of them we just need our frenzy and enrage throw most of the time and don't forget mr step from our boots this is our high strength and uh, jumping distance we can jump for really high distances as you can see and basically we can jump on buildings easily even up here in my opinion that's cool and looking really great that you can jump over here by standing on a high ground it will kind of increase your throwing distance so look at this our throwing distance is really amazing <laughs> and we <laughs> throwing this Nerinus down so you get him back to us and that's crazy we are totally protected from falling damage so we can jump up and down as much as we wish and strategy when we are playing this type of build is to get high ground get to like good position basically and start a fight and if targets fall in their saving throws as you can see they get into the high ground so basic strategy again it's uh, just to use frenzy it will use your bonus action and now try to jump to the high place from the high place just use your throwing attacks and throw Nerina at your targets this will do insane amount of damage and it's almost impossible to get to you. As you can see, damage numbers is insane. We got one more throw, so let's do it. Distance is insane and possibly she will fail this saving throw. Yeah, she's over here right now. So we're collecting bodies. Cool part, if you for some reason can't jump to some place, you can use Misty Step to travel to this place instead. So for example, I can't get to this roof, so I can use Misty Step to get to this roof. By doing this strategy, it's almost impossible to get to you and you will save a lot of your allies by changing position with your targets. Again, you can use it very creatively. For example, you can stand near the edge, near the cliff, switch positions with your target, and this will mess up enemy positioning a lot. So we are here and this lady over here. What she will do? <laughs> will she find any place to go? I got inspiration for this build by playing a little bit of a cheerful spirit in Dota 2. It's really fun to change positions with your target. So it's always up to you. Do you want to make both throws or just few throws but change positions with your targets? Because you can use bonus action every time to jump somewhere throw weapons at your targets and they will probably be teleported to you. Hit chance is high, damage is really high too, and the enemies won't even find stuff to do. Yeah, she cast in fire, she'll chill, what else she can do? She will just stay here. <laughs> this really messes her up enemies a lot, but make sure to be careful because this Nurilna can attack your allies too, so it's really dangerous weapon. But still, if you change positions, it's nice. If you're not, that's nice too. Oh, she got missed a step. But who cares? Again, you can even don't think about positioning too much. You can stay with your party and then attack mages in the back row. Mages is hard to get to, but if you manage to swap positions with them and it's most of the time easy, they don't have a lot of dexterity, you will place mages nearby of your teammates so they can finish them and you will be in the heat of a battle against enemies. 
And also you can use this rose to attack enemies that is invisible. So our enemy is invisible right now, somewhere over here, just attack in this area and you will find your enemies. At least most of the time, I hope. No, she's not here. Yeah, she's right here. Easy. And we are right now in the balcony. I hope you enjoy this awesome barbarian build for Minsk and you will enjoy playing it in your honor mode. See you in the next videos, guys.